When Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories was released on the PSP last year, GTA fans were not only excited about the handheld port, but the two inevitable sequels to follow. Once again showing just how far Sony's technology can go, Rockstar Games takes the PSP to Vice City. While it's an impressive feat, the story and the streaming perform just under expectations. Come on, having fun! Rock and roll! When we first got together I've seen your face before, my friend But I don't know no, we you know who I am Taking place two years before Vice City for the PS2, you assume the role of Vic Vance, a soldier desperately looking for a way to support his sick brother and substance abusing mother. Unfortunately, the only way to make a decent living in Vice City is to kill people, sell drugs, or combine the two in many creative ways. What's unique about the plot is that you're in the military, which is a first for a GTA drama. You also start on the opposite island from the console release and work your way backwards. But even with these fresh twists, the story is fairly unexciting. Most of your contacts are small-time criminals, and your motivations are pretty soft. Vic is always complaining about not wanting to become a thug, right before running out and gunning down hordes of gang members. You make me want to puke, you self-righteous dick! But unlike Liberty City Story's unfamiliar cast, Vice City is full of returning voices and entertaining cameos, including Philip Michael Thomas, Miami Vice's Tubbs as Vic's older brother Lance, Gary Busey as Phil Cassidy, and Danny Trejo as Umberto Robina, all returning from the PS2 version. Not to mention GTA's first celebrity playing himself guest appearance in the form of soft rock guru Phil Collins. Shouldn't we call the police? This is Vice City, mate. Seriously? <laughs> Just like Liberty City on the PSP, about 95% of the Vice City you know and love is in the game, but what's missing just hasn't been built yet. The same mission structure is in place, only you have a pager to update you instead of a cell phone. The pager is actually more convenient because you don't have to answer it or stand around chatting while you're talking to your next contact. The biggest addition, not only to Vice City, but the entire GTA franchise, is the ability to develop properties. To amass a corporate empire of prostitution and illegal substances, you have to hijack each safe house by destroying the vehicle out front, then eliminating the resistance that spills out. Once you've taken over, you can decide what type of business you want to start there and how big you want that enterprise to be. While it's fun to seize each property block by block, you'll eventually grow tired of it if you just want to burn through the story. Just like the turf wars in San Andreas, these sites are constantly under attack, and unless you want to dart across the map at a moment's notice to save a location that's only generating a thousand dollars, you'll probably only set up as many of these as you have to. <laughs> Moving from mission to mission still has a nice pace to it, with taxis that'll pick you up at the hospital or police station when you fail to anticipate the unexpected. To help you get back on your feet, Rockstar's added the ability to bribe your way back into the arsenal you had when you got picked up. For a hefty fee, of course. Those who have been to Vice City before know how huge it is. It's considerably bigger than Liberty City, and thanks to an impressive draw distance, you'll have numerous opportunities to see the whole thing. The graphics are solid, and while the frame rate will chug along every now and then, it's never more than you can handle. The real distractions are the reappearing environments. Vice City is broken up into little streaming blocks, each one showing off its true detail when you get close enough to appreciate it. But with the long straightaways and speedy sports cars, you'll often enter one of these zones long before the game has had time to finish loading it. The result is backgrounds and sometimes barriers popping up out of nowhere. This was also prevalent in Liberty City stories, but is much more noticeable this time around. It won't screw you up, but it can be disturbing. Come on, you're just going through a bad time right now. Things will improve. So technically, Vice City Stories has issues, but it's still an incredible achievement to run this massive, free-roaming city on such a tiny device. The enormous environment is even more inspiring when you're engaged in a wireless multiplayer match. It's a shame that there's no content available for a shared download, as all people playing need to have their own copy, but GTA Online on the PSP is a crazy amount of fun. Just make sure you know where you're going. Vice City's a big town, and if only a few people are playing, it can take several minutes before you even find each other. Also, no GTA release would be complete without a nostalgic custom soundtrack. 
and Vice City Stories has over a hundred individual tunes to keep you tapping your steering wheel as you speed through the busy streets. Every GTA game lets you do what you want, when you want. But in Liberty City Stories, there was a lot of functionality missing that had been previously developed and established on the larger consoles. Some of the absent abilities have been added this time, but it would still be nice to be able to jump a fence. What you can do is swim, fly helicopters and small planes, and ride ATVs, which first appeared in San Andreas. While we've seen all of those before, we haven't seen jet skis, which can either be taken on an open water joyride or run through a ramp labeled stunt course. All these add even more elements to the rampaging playground that is Grand Theft Auto. But no matter what vehicle you're driving, gun you're shooting, or thug you're brawling with, you'll have to deal with the PSP's limited controls. Nothing has changed here since Liberty City Stories, and that's not a good thing. With only one analog stick, there's no character moving and camera adjusting. This, combined with the smaller screen, gives you a limited perspective when compared to its TV resolution counterpart. That, and despite numerous complaints raised when Liberty City Stories came out, the lock-on targeting system is still broken when you're fighting up close. Large groups of people can be mowed down with ease from a distance, but get within a few feet of your enemies and you're one step closer to the emergency room. So, aiming can be a pain, climbing is impossible, and the single analog nub will most likely turn your left thumb into silly putty in a matter of minutes. But none of that goes far enough to make the game anything but an absolute blast to play. Whether you're on a rail-driven chase, a high-speed getaway, or a ballistic shootout, Grand Theft Auto continues to generate hours of free-roaming fun. Later, bro. What the fuck? Oh, shit! The latest GTA PSP adventure adds some gameplay features that were sorely missed in Liberty City and new vehicles this series has never seen before. But the mediocre plot and control limitations keep it from being the groundbreaking experience it always is on the bigger systems. But a decent GTA title is still a phenomenal game by comparison, making Vice City Stories one of the best purchasing decisions you can make for the PlayStation Portable. Yes, it is genius, no? Genius! Oh, 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 yeah, that's very thoughtful of you.